in an earlier video, I talked about how we can figure out where to put the right stress, the correct accent on any Latin word. And we can do that simply by knowing the length of the syllable, right? But there are some important cases of ambiguity, and I'm going to talk to you about those today. I'm Luke, and this is Polymathy. So like we talked about in that other video, we can figure out the length of a syllable if it has long or short vowels in it, right? If there's a long vowel in a syllable, well, that syllable is long. If it ends in a consonant, it's also long. And the way we divide up syllables is also important. If there are two consonants together, sometimes we leave them together and sometimes we separate them. Now, normally we separate them, but there are a number of words where we can separate them or maybe we don't. For example, the word patria, the homeland. So we have there a TR. Now, if we say, okay, well, there's two consonants, so patria, three syllables. So we can, if we divide it that way, then pat is a long syllable and then the ri, a, those are two short syllables. Patria, patria. However, we can also divide it by putting the T and the R together, and then we have pa, tri, a, patria. And then the first syllable is short. Poets make use of this flexibility in Latin all the time. So we'll see the same poet make a syllable like that long, and sometimes they'll make it short. Abintegro, we see in the fourth eclogue, for example. And uh, other places, we see that same word pronounced integro. Well, what does this mean? Essentially, in the natural language of classical Latin, especially the first century BC, this variety just exists already there, already naturally. And poets could then make the choice to make a syllable long or short. Latin poetry is based on the length of syllables, on how long they actually endure when, when uttered and not on, uh, on stress, the way that, say, English or Italian poetry is based. So this, um, this is a phenomenon that we can see specifically in four combinations. In BR, like tenebrae or tenebrae. In uh, CR, volucres or volucres. Uh, we can also see it in TR, patria or patria. And we can see it in, let's see, on GR, so integral or integro. So those four particular combinations are where we see this phenomenon. And therefore, whenever we encounter a text, we can assume that the length will be one or the other. In some words like patria, it doesn't affect the accent because we're not looking at lengthening or shortening, potentially, the second to last syllable, the penultimate syllable, like we talked about in the penultimate stress rule video. But we see it in a word like volucres or volucres both are correct. And that syllable, that penultimate syllable, when it's lengthened, if by dividing in this different way, we, we lengthen it, well, it will be lengthened the way the speaker normally utters the word, that then moves the stress there. So volucres instead of volucres, or integro or integro. And that is essentially uh, some of the most uh, important exceptions to the penultimate stress rule that we didn't mention in that, that video from before. From Rome, Italy, near the Vatican, thank you so much for watching. Valete. In an earlier video, I talked about the importance of something. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> in an earlier video, I talked about the penultimate stress rule and how it's so important to know the lengths of syllables in order to figure out where to put the stress in Latin. But actually, there's another part of this that I have to talk about. Siamo quasi. Penso posso andare. Io se io non mi distraggo, si può fare. Okay. <laughs> non lo quando sta Bruno, no. Non lo quando sta Bruno. No. <laughs> sì. Okay. Mm -hmm.